Hi, welcome to this week's quick tip. And this week I'm gonna show you how to use Python in R and Spotfire using what are called data functions. Now there's been a lot of changes in data functions starting with Spotfire 11 going to Spotfire 12. So I wanna do a kind of recap, a new video on this and a refresh on how to use data functions. I'm gonna go through everything. So even if you're new to data functions, this will be helpful for you. There's a bit to show here, so let's go ahead and get started. Now data functions are a way to enhance your analytics using Python and R scripts. You can use this with certain things like marking. So for instance, here I have different patients in the Montreal area and I wanna know where to place clinics to help those patients travel to the nearby clinic. I can use a marking by selecting certain patients here and the Voronoi polygons are gonna be automatically computed showing the best place to put those clinics. I can even use a slider to change the number of clinics and that will recompute the Voronoi polygons for me. I can use buttons to trigger Python and R scripts on entire sets of data. So if I want to train this autoencoder for a deep learning TensorFlow model, I can hit build model and that will automatically trigger the Python script. And Python scripts can be used with other interesting things like sentiment analysis, which we're seeing on these Airbnb reviews. And this is being computed on a full set of data. Now data functions work with a very simple premise. You have input data, it'll go through a data function and it'll give you output data. Now the input data can be read from tables, columns, or even certain values and document properties. They can be subset with markings and filters, and then they can output to datas, data tables, columns, or document properties as well. It can all be made very dynamic as well to be triggered when new data comes in or you select new markings and uh, it's all interactive and immersive that way. Now, data functions are compatible with R and Python, but also with MATLAB, SAS, TIPCO Data Science, Cloud Services, TIPCO Model Ops, NIME. There's a whole host of uh, different engines you can use behind data functions, but we're just gonna show Python and R in this video. So without further ado, let me go ahead and show you how I can use a data function in practice, and then I'm gonna show you how to build that data function from scratch. So here we have Airbnb data where we want to predict the prices of different listings using a data function. I can go to this FX flyout where you can see I have lots of data functions available. We have over 50 data functions available for download on the community. And you can see that at the end of this video, I'll point you to a link where you can download these data functions. You're also gonna see these pre-built analytics tools that are coming uh, right out natively in Spotfire, these individual FX uh, data functions you have to pin to the the flyout and I'll show you that in a little bit as well Let's go ahead and predict prices I'm going to use a random forest model and you can see that I have this random forest using Python And when I click that I get this nice flyout this flyout's been auto generated by my script So you don't have to worry about creating this flyout It's a way to make it easier for business users to implement your data functions So for my input data, I'm going to use my table that is my listings my training data set. I can choose to limit this data by a marking or a filtering if I'd like to make it immersive uh, and responsive to what I select, or I can just have it execute on the entire data set, which I'm gonna have execute right now. My target column is gonna be on my train table and uh, it's gonna predict price. Uh, I can also choose to limit the marking here as well. And then I wanna choose what type of uh, problem I want to do. I want to do a classification or regression. I want to do a regression here since I'm predicting continuous values. I Below that I have some optional parameters. Now these are going to be set by default by the data function. That's the way I've designed it, but I have an option to change some of these hyperparameters such as the number of trees in my random forest or the minimum samples in the split. Uh, that's all available right here in this uh, expandable flyout. Now, if you want your data function to refresh when new data comes in or uh, refresh when you select and mark different data, you want to check this box for refresh automatically. Also notice that you'll see this, these descriptions in here for how the data function, what the data function does, uh, what the different input parameters are. Uh, I'm going to discuss that when we create a data function from scratch. When I hit OK, it's just going to actually compute on uh, initial set of the data just to test for the outputs. And we're going to see that I have an output table, um, I have an output value, and I have another, uh, another output value and output table. So I can choose to add this as a new data table, which is what I'm going to want to do for my predictions. But if I wanted to actually join this to another data set, I can use add rows or add columns. Or I can use things like replace a data table or add calculated columns to another data table. 
Uh, I can also choose to exclude certain outputs. Uh, so this value, uh, I'm gonna wanna output this value as a document property, um, but, and, and, and this is gonna go into the evaluation metric document property. It's gonna create a new document property for me called evaluation metric. And then on this one, uh, it'll do the same thing that I can choose to exclude it as well and it won't actually compute that. So uh, there's also a feature importance table that's calculated. Let's go ahead and hit okay and have this compute. You can see it computed very quickly and I have a uh, price and prediction here. So when I click, uh, this is a test data that has been generated by my data function. So um, I can go into my data canvas and starting in Spotfire 11.5, you actually have a data function canvas available where you can click that data function and you can see that same flow of input data to output data with the script in between. So we can see my listings clean data set that went in. Uh, we can see that I selected my price column for my target column, my value I put as regression. Uh, that all goes in to this script. Uh, I can click the gear icon and I can see the Python script that's actually used. This is the actual data function. Uh, again, we'll go into how, a little bit more of this uh, after I show you how the data function works. Uh, if I want to change some values, I can hit this gear icon and I can change my input data. I can change my inputs right there. Uh, and then I have my outputs. This is the test data that came out with the prediction and the price, uh, the evaluation metric that came out, uh, the feature importance table. Remember, we skipped the evaluation score, so that's skipped here. Uh, I can change these outputs as well by using the gear icon. So this is automatically created for you when you run a data function. So here in Airbnb, my Airbnb analysis, uh, I have the results as a prediction and a price. I'm gonna select both of these and Spotfire is gonna automatically suggest a, a scatter plot because I have two uh, continuous variables. So I can create a scatter plot for these two uh, and place it right here. And now we see the predicted price and the actual price of Airbnb. And we can see that these Airbnbs are predicted to be priced higher than they actually are priced. So maybe that's a candidate for a host to increase the price of their Airbnb. And then these are actually predicted to be lower than the actual price. So these are overpriced Airbnbs. Uh, you'll notice in the uh, legend that I have an FX here. So for my input data or anything that's attached to my data function, I can click this and I can change my inputs directly from my Spotify visualization. So if I wanted to change this to a, a classification, I could change that right here and refresh the data function. Uh, if I wanted to change the price column, so let's say I was changing that to another uh, value. When you change something, you'll see this little uh, refresh button. So you can refresh it directly from the FX uh, flyout uh, or the FX uh, uh, handler right here, or you can refresh it in the title bar where you see the refresh data table now refresh my calculations. Now I wanna show you how to actually register a data function into your analysis. So where you go is this tools and register data functions. And with this data register data functions, you'll get this window where you can put in the name of your data function. You can choose your engine. If you want the R engine or the Python engine, uh, you can choose the packages or the libraries, the open source packages and libraries that you want in here. I'll show you in a second how to install those. And then you can put a description in. Description's optional, but it shows up nice in that flyout. Remember when we had the descriptions for the input parameters and the description for the data function? This is a description for the data function. You put that in. You put your script in here and then you have input and output parameters. So to show you how this works when I have an actual data function, I'm gonna bring in this random forest data function. Now this is a SFD file. SFD file is a data function file. You can import and export data functions to your local drive, or you can import and export them from your library. Here I'm gonna take this from my local drive, this random forest data function. It already has a description in here. Uh, I can choose to uh, put my packages, in, install my, uh, and load up my libraries right from the script itself. Uh, and uh, there's uh, input parameters and output parameters. So for my input parameter, I have DF for the data frame. That's my input data. It's set as a table. It has a description available for it. I can edit this and I can add new ones. So to edit this, I can choose if it's a table, value, or column. Uh, I can give it a nice display name for that flyout and a nice description for that flyout. I can also choose if I want it to be uh, all the value, all the data type values or just numeric data type values. This will restrict the inputs for the user that's actually using your data function so they don't put the wrong data types in. 
So this is for the data frame. I can also choose to um, have this as a required parameter so that it shows up as a top as a required parameter. If I uncheck this, it'll be an optional parameter. So the data frame is, is set up there as my input parameters and then my output parameters are set up with uh, same thing, table, column, or value uh, with a nice description and a display name to register these input and output parameters. Now every script has inputs and outputs and what you're doing is you're setting up those inputs and outputs to wire up to your Spotfire data. And so what you have here is uh, my input is this DF data frame and if I wanna create that as an input parameter, I can just highlight it, right click it and I can select input parameter to bring up my input parameter window or I could have selected output parameter to make that an output parameter. So I set up all my inputs and output parameters for my script and then it's almost ready for use with Spotfire. The last thing I can do is give it an icon, and this is introduced in Spotfire 12.1. You can give it an icon for the flyout. So I'll give it this nice prediction icon. And then what I can do is a couple things. If I want to actually run this on my data now and have this data function embedded in my DXP for future use with this DXP, I hit the run button. And this gives you the developer's view of that flyout. So that flyout allowed me to choose my input data, and this is allowing me to do the same thing. So my input data is gonna be a data table, which is uh, listings clean train. I can select certain columns for that table to go in, or I can go to search expression and put it in asterisk, and that'll bring in the entire data frame, uh, the data table. Uh, and then I can also go down to limit this by markings and filters that are in my analysis. And if I want this to run automatically, I can hit refresh button to uh, refresh automatically to actually have this update when there's new markings or there's new uh, data that becomes available. That's all available there. And then my output data, I can choose for this one wants to be a table. I can choose this to be a data table output and I can create this as a new data table with that name. I can choose to run this locally on my local machine with my local hardware or force it to run on the server with the server's hardware. I typically keep this at default. Okay, so that's how I can I can hit run and I can hit okay and that will embed it into my DXP and that's recommended to do the first time that you're registering a data function. The other thing you can do is actually save it to your library for future use. So here I'm gonna save it to this folder in my library, Random Forest Python, uh, give it some keywords if I wanna search for different data functions easier. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just save this. And then when I close this, uh, I'm able to go to my FX flyout. And here I can add new data functions by going find items in the library. And we see this modeling random forest data function. I click the three dots, I pin it to my FX. And now in my FX flyout, I have a new data function uh, available for future use. This is the same thing as when you pin mods to your visualization flyout and you get those mods for future use. What Spotfire is doing is looking in the library when it loads up to see what's available for data functions and mods and loading that into your UI for you for easier use. Now, if I just wanted to run the data function, uh, I haven't run it before, this is a new analysis, let's say, I can click this and I get that flyout again that we showed earlier. It's also important to note that you can add visualizations such as a text area into uh, uh, your canvas and from here you can actually add buttons so I can add a button such as an action control and this action control I can link to a data function and whatever data functions are in my analysis I can click that and uh, it will uh, I can say run data function as a button and I'll hit OK and I'll save this and now I have this button where I can run data functions from a button instead of triggering off a marking or a filter or uh, new data refreshes. Now lastly, I wanna show you how you can work with open source Python and R. If you wanna install an open source Python library or open source R package, you can go into the tear tools for the R engine or Python tools for the Python engine. And when you go to tear tools, for instance, you'll uh, be able to go to package management. You get the same package management view when you uh, look at the Python tools. Uh, and you can load from the package repository. So Python goes to PyPy, uh, R goes to CRAN, and I'm able to load up all of the available CRAN packages that are on the CRAN repository. And I can, for instance, install a package like Zoo, uh, and I can just search for it and hit install. And that'll install it to my local machine and my local analyst. It's not gonna install it on the web player. If you want your data functions with open source packages to work on the web player, there's gonna be a separate video on how you can install those on the web player, but this is how you just do it for your local analysts.
Now, as I mentioned, we have many different data functions available on the TIPCO community. You can go to this page. I'll put the link in the video description. This gives a little overview of what are data functions, how they work. It'll give you a little tutorial. And when you scroll down, you'll get different data functions that you can download and use in your own analysis, such as data preparation, modeling and prediction, model evaluation, uh, geospatial analysis, uh, the works. There's all kinds of things that you can do with these. We got many more continuing to come. Uh, so keep checking back on this page for more data functions. And I hope that you use these data functions to really expand your analysis. You can use these for statistical analysis. You can use this for physics-based analysis. You can use this just to wrangle your data and modify your data. Um, it's all really, uh, really intuitive and really nice way to do advanced analytics in Spotfire. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you subscribe to get more content and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Thank you.